This was raw for May the 9th, honestly. Or no, May the 8th. I'm sorry. The day May after the backlash. May the I said that. I caught myself. You don't need you know it all. Don't start on me again. Again, will you stop? Again, like you did on the uh, the other program here. Anyway, they opened up with Cody, and Cody obviously is the story here, and and the story is going to get even more complicated. But they showed the highlights of the match with Brock in black and white when Brock was covered in blood. And by the way, by the way, did you see that it has been reported that it was intentional where Brock had butted the uh, the turnbuckle? Is that so? I mean, how hard is that to do? Let me just stop you. The idea that. I'm absolutely going to get hard way. You can never really predict how much blood you're going to get or if it's going to work, right? Well, no, but here's the thing. He had he had scouted it out and if you go back and look when the buckle or when the pad comes off the buckle, there is a screw that you can see it without I'm trying to figure out how to explain this without a visual illustration here, but there's a screw that goes through there. You saw that there was a screw on the top and you had to figure because it wasn't just blunt. There was an edge. So you had to figure that if he hit it hard enough with his forehead, that it was probably going to get some color some way <laughs> because the, the forehead if you hit a sharp object, since that's where your bone is, it's going to cut it because there's no, there's not that much room for the flesh to move around. Whereas on your cheek, there's a lot of room for the flesh to move around, which is why that when you get busted open the hard way in the cheek, the cheekbone cuts from the inside out because the cheekbone feel under your eye. Cheekbone is sharp, but the skin moves around all over the place, right? Right. So when you get hit there, and I speak from experience, 21 stitches from Bill Dundee one night in Memphis. The doctor said, yeah, your cheekbone cut from the inside out. So I'd put, I think, eight underneath and 13 on top or whatever. But if you go at it, the worst thing you're going to do is you're going to gouge, the worst thing is you're going to gouge yourself open in your forehead from that fucking edge of that screw. It's not something that I'd particularly want to do. Maybe, of course, now. Since it's Brock and he's getting, what, maybe $1.5 million for that match, I might headbutt a goddamn screw on the wall for $1.5 million. That seems like a Brock thing, though. Like, do you want to get color? Yeah. No, I'm going to do it the real way. <laughs> well, yeah, well, but I'm gonna, hold on, I'll address that. But the only thing is, I think, if anything, he might have wanted to do it farther up high because it was disturbingly in between his is right up above his nose in between his eyes. And I think he probably would have preferred to do it a couple inches farther up, but if he was going to do it on purpose. But nevertheless, the stupid thing, again, the stupid thing is that they're not using the blade. They've banned the blade, and they want to be able to tell their sponsors that, the, no, this is not self-inflicted, um, you know, self-mutilation or whatever they fucking call it. So now <laughs> they've got guys who say, fuck it, I'll just headbutt the fucking ring post or the fucking buckle or the stairs or whatever. God damn it. Just fucking use the blade and tell them you didn't. Brett used to do it. It worked with Vince. It ought to work with Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Anyway, good hard way from Brock. Good hard way. Yet I tell you what, the old timers would have been proud. As Sputnik Monroe or Ron Wright. That is like a chisel. They, that it basically is like running into the chisel. Well, no, because the chisel was more controlled than this. That's true. That's true. Because it was a. But now we got to tell everybody what the chisel is. If you just joined us, folks, Ron Wright. In East Tennessee, in the old days, to make sure the people believed his shit, went to a metal worker and had a set of knuckles fabricated with the edge, the sharpened edge of a chisel on a flat piece of metal that he could then tape up and look like the knucks you use in the ring. And when he popped you with it, you didn't need to worry about using a blade. You got juice. 
but that was still it was a it was a very sharp surface but a controlled depth he had not only put he only had the edge of it attached to the metal but then he had taped it so it couldn't go in too far right and and he was hitting you in a specific place with it rather than you just launching yourself head first and can't really see because you're going 100 miles an hour and hoping for the best. So the chisel was more controlled than this. And I remember a while back when, when Brock and Orton and, and Brock elbowed Orton and opened him up by gentleman's agreement beforehand. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And Jericho went crazy because yeah. he didn't know about it being arranged. Yeah, and almost fought Brock when it probably wouldn't have got fucking Brock was, I'm sure so surprised. Like you fucking idiot. You think I did this on purpose that he didn't fucking do anything till it was explained. Then I think didn't Brock hit, but the ring post here a few years ago. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. And that was a, that was a mad dog buzz Sawyer thing to do also, which explains a lot about him because he didn't just do it for a million dollars once in a while. He did it nightly on fucking spot shows. But anyway, the point is, we have decided that we would now not only tell everybody how that the blood is done, but even when people are good enough to do it without anybody seeing it or knowing how it was done, then they still feel they have to admit it. So it's better to just bash our own heads into fucking sharp metal shit or hit each other real hard. You fucking morons. Tell goddamn your local sponsor that, oh gosh, it was an accident. It ain't ballet. Shit happens. Beautiful, stylish flooring. There's a place here in Louisville that has a TV commercial called River City Flooring. Here is their entire jingle. River City Flooring, it's River City Flooring. Beautiful, stylish flooring. How much do you think they paid for that? Too much. So, 